Yes, he cleanses, carry and do it to Father. We thank you, God, that his blood has washed us and cleanses from all sin, Father, past, present, and future. And Father, our minds cannot comprehend, Father, that truth here, God. And so we ask you for faith, O oh God. And so, Father, we just thank you, God, that even now, Father, as we pray for Anna, Jesus Christ, the God, who is a high priest in heaven, dear Father, will, Father, extend, Father, his right hand. And, Father, Jesus Christ extends his right hand of power, dear God, your Holy Spirit will touch the Father and grant her a special anointing of God from the crown of her head to the source of her feet. And, Father, as the Holy Spirit breathes upon her, Father, body, soul, and spirit. And you'll give her wisdom, dear God. And Father, since you've wired her mind and her brain, dear God, especially to make money, Father, for your kingdom, we thank you, God. Just like her to expand in business, Father. So she, Father, could use the gift that you give to her, Father, that gift of giving, Father, to give back to your kingdom. So, Father, we thank you, God, for business people, Father, whom you have blessed very much. We thank God that you have honor, Father, to her purpose, Father by expanding her business, Father, so she can grow spiritually, Father, even her emotions, Father, which you will feel, Father. We thank you, God, that she has stable emotions, Father, and she is healed, Father, completely, dear God, and she doesn't weep anymore, Father, when she comes, but now, Father, she has your joy, my God, and your peace and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So, Father, thank you, God, for the wonderful work you've done in her, Father, and the restoration that has taken place. Your shalom, Father, your fullness, my God, Father, we thank you, God, for her daughter, Jolana. Father, we thank you, God, that because of her honor, set apart, Father, and therefore we thank you, Father, for filling her mind, dear God, with the spirit of excellence, dear God. Even in her school, oh God, she's excellent, and we thank you, Father, for your faith and towards her. So now, dear God, we pray for Kevin, Father. We pray, dear God, that you forgive him, Father, for his stupidity, dear God. Father, it's only now, dear God, he has realized, Father, the treasure he has lost, but it's too late. Father, in mind and support his four children that he has with the neighbor next door, dear God. So, Father, have mercy on him because of Anna and Shalana. Because of them, sanctify him and help him, O oh God, so that he will see his way. So, those four innocent children will not suffer because of his children. So, Lord God, we pray that he would come to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And your Holy Spirit, Father, will convict him of. And, it. and we pray, dear God, that he will not harden his heart, but your Holy Spirit will work with him, Father, and he will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as Anna and Shalana. So, we thank you, God, that in spite of the drought that we face financially in Trinidad right now, just like Isaac who planted in the time of family in Egypt, and he blessed them. That you will prosper her father, even as her soul prospers. So, now, dear God, we pray <clears throat> that very soon, <coughs> excuse me, Father, that very soon, dear Lord, you will bless Anna with her own home, Father. <clears throat> you will bless her with her own land, her own people. Father, money in the bank, Father, to take care of her grandmother who took care of her and Father, scholarships for Jolana, Father. Lord, for we pray for God that you bless Anna, Father. You will use her, my God, to bless the widows and the orphans, the fatherless, other single mothers, dear God. And you'll put a walk in their shoes with empathy, Father. Dear God, Father, we thank you that even now, Father, you are dispatching your most powerful warrior angels. The place a pledge of protection around Anna and Jolana, Father, even in their sleep. So, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless Anna, Father, with your choicest blessings of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And I ask Jesus Christ, our high priest in heaven, to intercede for her and to bless her and to Amen. plant her beside those streams of living water. So that her leaves was never widowed. So we thank you for her. And we thank you, God, that she's blessed going in and coming out, Father. She's had another clear father. All right, glory to God. The last time we looked at um, the tribe of Asher, because that's where 
Father, let us. Amen. Asha. So we did uh, the tribe of Benjamin before, and that was powerful. That was in depth. Benjamin was blessed as a warrior. Asha. She. Well, I keep saying she because it sounds like a girl, but it's a, a tribe. So he. Okay. They. They were blessed. A spy, so it's like wisdom to overtake your enemies, wisdom to overtake your, um, your, yeah, well, your enemies basically. We looked at Rahab and we looked at Nani somewhere, right? Yeah, okay, so we looked at the incense of Rahab and how the spies were sent into the city because that's where Father took us. Now, today we're doing, um, Today we're doing the 12 oxen. So open your okay, the name of the thing is 12 oxen, but this is our scripture um, verses that we were given. So we're just searching it out. Today we're doing the rest. The 12 oxen or the ox support the lever. So we're going there. We're going straight into Solomon's temple. Open your scripture page. Father, we just pray. You teach us like you always do, Daddy. Help us to focus. I ask God, Jesus, that I give not my private interpretation or opinion, but to give the word as you give it. In your name, amen and amen. All right. Let's find this 12, what? The 12 ox, 12 12 ox support the lever. We're looking at Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple. I have to have something. I have everything. Yeah. All right. Second King sixteen verse seventeen. Okay. Bye. Second King sixteen verse seventeen. All right, this is where they stole. We're not looking at where they stole. Just give me a second. Looking a little more. Okay, Kings. We have First Kings. We have First Kings seven, verse twenty-nine. All right, let's read the uh, Second Kings first. That was the first one, so let's read that. Second Kings se 16, verse 17. So we're reading verse 16 to 18. God bless your brother Benny. God bless your brother Jeff. And everybody else who comes on. Second Kings 16, verse 17, 16 to 18. So Uriah, the priest, did just as King Ahaz, verse 17, King Ahaz also cut off the frames of the movable stands and removed the bronze from each of them. He took down the sea from the bronze bowls that were under it and put it on a stone. Verse 18. 
And on account of the king of Assyria, he removed the Sabbath canopy they had built in the temple and closed the royal entryway outside the house of the Lord. This sounds like they're tearing it apart. That was supposed to be an N, not an M. So into what first kings seven where am I typing? First Kings seven twenty. All right. Reading verse twenty eight to thirty. This was the design of the stands. They had side panels attached to uprights. In the uprights were lions and oxen and cherubim. On the uprights was a pedestal above, and below the lions and the oxen were unbevealed works. Each stand had four bronze wheels with bronze axles and a basin resting on four supports with rates at each side. Let's see if I get anything else on the 12 oxen with the uh, lever. They represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me a second here. Okay. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders. All right. So give me verse 18 of Exodus 30. And first Kings. All right, so let's read Exodus 30, verse 18. Verse 17 to 19, Again the Lord said to Moses, You are to make a bronze basin with a bronze stand for washing. And I have to go into the... Uh, well, to do their sacrifices, yeah, and then go to the Most Holy, to, to anoint the Most Holy. Listen, it says, They make a bronze basin with a bronze stand for washing. Set it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water into it. See? Um, or after they go and slaughter to do the burnt offerings and the peace offerings and all that. On which Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet. All right, so stop there. So what do you like? A priest unto the Lord. Amen. Now, the bronze basin, which represented the washing or the cleansing, who has taken that over? Who are we washed and cleansed by? Are we, wa are we washed and cleansed by water in a wash basin? No. Jesus and his blood cleanses us. Amen. So, Father, just now. Dolly, I'm writing. Unto the Lord. Okay, so let me find that. The Levites. The Levites. The Levites. Now, okay, go with me in Deuteronomy 18, 8. 
18 1, sorry. Sorry, don't send the last verse first. Deuteronomy 17, verse 20. This will be built above his countrymen, and he will not turn aside from the command the commandment to the right or to the left in order that he and his sons may reign many years over his kingdom in Israel. so god has given some rules and he said listen he said even the levites they will be priests unto him right but we know that there are how do i say this not certain tribes i want to say but there are people who have not received jesus as lord so even as they are in israel and we know that god as much as he it's kind of like what he did with benjamin where benjamin was blessed to be a man of war and somebody would overtake their his enemies and empty out his enemies or whatever god also blessed israel to be a people to, to proclaim his name to the earth but we know that some of them have rejected the messiah so the 12 tribes of israel why does god israel is who it's jacob and jacob wrestled with man and god and he prevailed that's how his name became jacob right so when god blessed israel and of course he passed on the blessings to his sons which became the tribes 12 tribes of israel now the 12 oxen, they represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And as they carry the lever, or the lever, 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 as they carry it, they kind of hold, it's representing something. It's representing the people of Israel that are supposed to, even as it were, lift up their God as seen. Here, O Israel, the Lord is one. The Lord, He is God. Amen. But we have a we have a a lot of fallen away. Actually, we have a lot of fallen away. Where we're going to Deuteronomy eighteen one. We just read Deuteronomy seventeen. Deuteronomy eighteen one. The Levitical priests, indeed, the whole tribe of Levi shall have no portion or inheritance with israel they are to eat the offerings made by fire to the lord that is they have no inheritance among their brothers is verse 2 the lord is their inheritance as he promised them so who the lord bless no man will curse remember we actually we in and we looked at the blessing of the lord staying all right so when Solomon did this, when he built this thing, it was like a statement. So in 2 Kings, where um, they were actually pulling apart the thing, they were doing it. But can anyone undo what the Lord has done? No. Okay? So... where's my scripture page okay there we go i'm not seeing the one that i was reading okay deuteronomy 18 there we go hold on i want to see if there's anything else about the 12 oxen so what is israel called to do they're called to be a holy people unto God. They're called to shine the glory of God unto the earth. They're called to show the world and who God really, um, I want to say exposed, I want to say revealed himself to be is what? The, the Messiah as well. He is the Savior. He is God Almighty, the Creator, and God the Savior. So when... Okay, so when Israel, when the, tro the 12 tribes, it's 12, it's 12 children of Jacob, and they were all blessed. Remember we read about that in Genesis, 
49. Genesis, Genesis. Genesis 49-ish. Genesis 49. Alright, Genesis 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you which shall be full in the last days. Where are we? We are in the last days. Alright. Here's what he says. Verse 2, Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel. Your father, Reuben. Thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency and dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt up before went up to thy father's bed, and defiled it. Then thou went up to my couch. Verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. In their inhabitation. See? There's a shift. The first will be last and the last first. Check this out. So it says, O my soul, come not unto their assembly. My honor, be, thou, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dug down a wall. Verse 17. Anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will, divide, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. I will divide them in Jacob. It meant deceitful one or scoundrel or... You know, uh, there's so many names. He said, I'll divide them in Jacob, but I'll scatter them amongst Israel. Or I'll scatter them in Israel. Israel means the one true God reigns, so he's going to use them. Listen, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Hallelujah. And where does Jesus come from? The line of the, well, he's the line of the tribe of Judah. So he comes from the tribe of Judah. Listen. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Even if he's to the tribe of Judah, when he says thy father's children shall bow down to thee, it even calls us to, re to, to remember that the Holy Spirit is to Jesus. Amen? And the Holy Spirit is the? Well, He's the Father in the Spirit. Alright, let's read on. And it says, Thy children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. Aha! So Judah conquers. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. If we say whelp, we can say roar. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall be wise? He knows exactly what he's doing. All right. Ten. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Scepter as in king of kings, lord of lords. And he said, No a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and unto him shall the gathering of the people be what is he talking about okay shiloh all right let's go with one the scepter shall not depart from judah he is the king of kings and the lord of lords he's the one reigning in the world. and no one will take it from him amen it says no a lawgiver from between his feet he is the just and righteous one. Everything that he does, he's working in righteousness. Um, it says, neither a lawgiver from between his feet shall what? Depart from Judah. Until, until and 
and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. What is Shiloh? Let's see. What should look? Shiloh. S H I L O. Not that. Let's say a pacifier. Let's say comfort. Let's say this is even a rapture scripture. Oh boy, I just realized. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes or Shiloh. Listen to what he says. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That's rapture scripture even. He put out his hands a second time to gather his people. All right. How did he do it the first time? He came and he dwelt amongst them and he was rejected. Well, he did it on the cross. He stretched out his hands to draw all unto him but all didn't draw near amen all right so it says um yeah we have to go there this is rapture scripture the lord will stretch out his hands to recover recover his people a second time go with me to isaiah 11 11. rapture scripture open gates check this out isaiah 11 11. on that day the root of the banner for the people who is the root of jesse the king of david listen the nations will seek him and his place of rest will be glorious. On that day, verse 11, the Lord shall extend his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people from a Assyria, from Patro, Petros, or Patros, from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. What is this saying? What is he doing? He's gathering his people. How? By his grace, by his love, by his those who have received and walked. Listen, he said, I will he will and gather the exiles of Israel. Remember, he said, I'll I'll gather them from the four corners of the earth. It says, He will collect the sky after the four corners of the earth. Okay. It will come to pass that. So it represents a, a kind of all tribes and they're lifting up the lever. Now, okay, so when the priests and they, they did the offering of the animals that the people would bring before Jesus, before Jesus right? Now, the, you think that would be a clean job or be a dirty job? It would be a dirty job, right? It will be, there will be literally blood stained. Now, our high priest is in heaven making intercession. So we don't need an earthly priest, all right? But we did before Jesus came. So it would point us to him coming. Now, when Israel is regathered, take all tribes all tribes and he said from he lists them out just now you see he just listed them out now, just give me a second as i go back into isaiah one two three four five six seven at least seven places he lists one two assyria Kush, elam shina and hamath from the islands of the sea eight eight places he named all right so the Lord is showing a regathering of Israel. The regathering was made to wash the high priest after he had, or, and his sons 
after they had done the sacrifices for the people. Now, that's the, imagine slaughtering how many thousands of animals and, and you're just covered in blood, not dirty thing. No, okay. So Israel is carrying the lever. What does it represent? The Messiah himself. Okay, because we don't we don't get washed by water now like for ourselves. We get washed by his blood. All right? So Israel has to regather and whether it's Jew or Gentile coming together because Paul was a Gentile, it says that um, this man shall be a witness unto thee. Yeah, also a, a Jew. How? A spiritual Jew. So when God gathers his people together, this represents the regathering of Israel. It shall come to pass that on that day. Let, read with me Zechariah 12, verse 3. Behold. Now, when these oxen, oxen are very, the oxes are very, very strong animals. And even if they backslide, even if it runs away from their calling, even if they... Um, Kind of like what Jacob, remember, not Jacob, um, um, not Jonah. Kind of like what God did with Benjamin. He blessed Benjamin to be a man of war, and, and Benjamin to, and he, bring him, he brought him back, right? God brought him back. Now listen, God says, behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of the surrounding peoples even as the oxen bears that lever up you know that that well this is what i hear that's what babylon must drink when she oppresses god's people and that represents nations from every tribe um people from every tribe that is god says I will cause them to come back. Remember he said, and I'll give them one heart. And Okay, that's what I'm looking for here right now. The remnant. Um, Ezekiel, is it? And Jeremiah. This is all lifting the banner. Revelation 7 1. No. Give me a second. All right, there we go. Give me Jeremiah 23 3. Ezekiel as well. Give me Jeremiah 23.3. Therefore, this is what the Lord God of Israel says about the shepherds who tend to his people. He scattered my flock. Remember when Jesus said, what did he say? I came for the lost sheep of Israel. Two. The lost sheep of Israel God 
with me to Matthew fifteen twenty four. Verse eight, written and saw a word. So his disciples came and urged him, send her away, because she was crying. Remember the lady who wanted uh, the crumbs, or she wanted the bread. I don't want to pay attention to her, but she was a Canaanite woman. So check this out. It says, but Jesus didn't answer a word. So his disciples came and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hold right there. I hear him saying something. In my father's house are many mansions who in my father jesus as he presented himself savior who's the father what's his name the i am what is the meaning of israel the one who reigns or he rules El, israel okay so go with me to john 14 2. do not let your hearts be troubled you believe in god believe in me as well in my house are many rooms or mansions if it were not so would i have told you that i'm going there to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will what? I will come back. What do we call the coming of Jesus again? What do we expect to happen? The rapture. I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that you may, you also may be where I am. Rapture scripture. So we back now to Matthew fifteen twenty four. All right. So look what he said. He said in verse twenty four, he answered, "I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, of the house of Israel, who are going up in their rapture. The first is last, and the last first. Okay, we know that. Who is going in the rapture? Who forsakes the blood of Christ?" No. Who tramples the blood of Christ? No. Who pays attention that Jesus is the Christ? Yes. Yes. Who is the Christ? Yes. Who's walking in a manner that is worthy of the salvation they received? Yes. These are the lost sheep of Israel. Whether they come from Jew or Jesus. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Come with me again to... Okay, verse 25. The woman came and knelt before him. Look, she said. Go with me to Jeremiah 23, 3. Reading verse 2. Therefore, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. This is what the Lord God of Israel says about the shepherds who tend his people. Are you teaching them about Jesus? What are you teaching them about? Listen. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your deeds, the Lord. Verse 3, then I myself will gather the remnant. There we go again, just like Isaiah 11, 11, the remnant of my flock. I have banished them. Who sent them out? God did. Remember the scattering of um, the Jews? Listen, I will return to them where they will be fruitful and multiply. Now, verse 4. What is their pasture? Well, their land. Listen, verse 4. I 
will raise up shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid nor will any go missing declares the lord all right so it's going to be a happy place a good place a place where people could thrive in the word and in the lord um, there'll be no tears there'll be no sickness there'll be no death where's that and they all promise to come all right all right so with me to zachariah 12. behold i'll make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to the surrounding peoples why as soon as the fullness of the gentiles is complete all right what does it say it says behold i'll make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding people as well as jerusalem on that day when all the nations of the earth gather against her. how many all jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples all who will heave it away will be severely injured remember what he said about the cornerstone the build the stone the builders have rejected all right listen to what he says all who will heave it away will be severely injured what happens to you here we say your butcher drop <laughs> what do we call the butcher i don't know what you what do you call that for ladies it's like the womb for men it's like the groin area and the stomach whatever that's why you end up going having a runny tummy and going to the washroom listen it says verse 4 on that day declares the lord i will strike every horse with panic and every rider with madness i will keep a watchful eye on the house of judah but I will strike all the horses of the nations with blindness. Remember, this reminds me, of, it reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah almost immediately, where the angels came to test the city. And they said, bring out the stranger that we, we may know them. And Lot came out and they began to press on Lot and the men the men pulled lot inside and then they what they struck the men with blindness why it's coming against the righteous ones okay it's just like that here in verse 4 in that day declares the lord what day, the day they, uh, where they afflict god's people it says or where they come against jerusalem on every side it says, I will strike every horse with panic, or every rider with madness. I will keep a watchful eye on the house of Judah, but I will strike all the horses of the nations with blindness. Remember, Jesus was the cornerstone. He's not rejected. All right. I hear him saying, a stone hewn out of rock was taken. Oh, the building of the building in uh, New York. What do you call that building again? The tall, tall building. The Empire State Building, does it? No, yeah, the tall, tall building where the towers went down. What do you call that building that they made? Some center, what center it is? Okay, that building, you know, the building, the building that Obama signed, he said, a hewn stone out of the mountains, out of New York, outside New York, was taken, and they used that as the cornerstone. And they said, um, this was the what the strength of 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 new york the strength of america yeah they they, they use what was what was god talking about when he said a a hewn stone not made by not carved by human hands or something like go with me 
Sunt Daniel. The Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. When the Twin Towers went down. Mm -hmm. Daniel what? But Daniel 2? Ish? Mm -hmm. The Lord has done this. Yeah. Daniel 2. It says, The Lord has done this. Who's done this? The Lord. Not what they did in New York. Not what they said was the cornerstone no the lord daniel 2 34 now we're looking in daniel 2 34 at the and like the statue that um what was this king's name nebuchadnezzar that he he dreamt its legs were iron and its feet were partly iron and partly clay that's rome and divided rome the stone was cut out, not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay. Look where it hit. Rome. And then the iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold were shattered. So Rome divided Rome. Media. No, wait. Yeah. Rome divided Rome, Greece, Media, Persia, and Babylon shattered who has taken reign who is the stone well it tells you the bible tells you he is the chief corner stone so they have rejected and remember what we were looking at with benjamin the stone the builder well J benjamin was like the rut the runt of the whole israel as in jacob by the way All right, and the okay. Then the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were shattered, and became like chaff on the threshing floor in summer. That's like when the farmers burning all the garbage, yeah. The wind carried them away, and not a trace of them could be found. But the stone had struck the statue. The stone that had struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the, air, the earth. What did I say? Jesus has conquered. Amen. He is the cornerstone. He was rejected. But guess what? The one the builders rejected, God uses. All right. Go with me. Matthew twenty one forty four verse forty three to forty five Therefore I tell you that shall be from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. What is he saying? Well, remember Israel for the Gentiles can come in. The spiritual Israel. All right, here's what he says. He says, "Therefore, I'll tell you, a kingdom, the kingdom of God, will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce fruit." Therefore, he who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but he whom it falls will be crushed. Now, now Pharisees and Pharisees heard. Jesus' parables, they knew he was speaking about them. Why? What did they reject? Jesus as the Messiah. So the twelve, what does it look like? What are, what are they doing? They're lifting up the Messiah. It represents all tribes of Israel coming together, Jew and Jew, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. To lift up God Himself. All right, hold on. Is there any more with the oxen, twelve oxen? Any scriptures with the twelve oxen? David and the ark. David and the ark. The ark. 
Yeah, just bring it back and get off. I don't know how, how many oxen it was. Oh, the are uh, carrying the oxen. I'm um, the ox. The oxen carrying the ox. Yeah, the ox. <laughs> the ox. Oh, really? Yeah. But. But I think it was 12 oxen. Took the tw he was working the 12 oxen. Elisha. Yeah, Elisha. Elisha. So when Elisha was working the 12 oxen, remember when Elisha saw him? What did he do? He cut them up. Yep, he gave them away. This. He was plowing with twelve oxen. First Kings nineteen nineteen. Which one which one this one which one this goes with? Mm, is it Matthew 21 19? Check this out. So Elijah departed and found Elijah. He was plowing with 12 teams of oxen. 12 teams of oxen. Check this out. He sent them out two by two. He has 24. Check this out. And he was lucky. Who's the 12th tribe of Israel? Who was the 12th tribe of Israel? Benjamin. Benjamin was the last son. He was the youngest, right? Benjamin was the youngest. Mm -hmm. Right, so Benjamin would have been the last one. But what does the Lord say about the last being first and the first being last? Check this out. So Elijah passed by him, threw his cloak around him. Verse 20. So Elisha left the oxen and ran off to Elijah and said, Please, let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye and then I'll follow you. Go on back, Elijah replied. For well, what have I done to you? I didn't do anything. I think it was just kind of sneaky of Elijah. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I didn't do anything. But it's like Jesus passing by Peter and Andrew and say, come follow me. And they just left everything and followed him. Remember what he said? No man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. If he look now, you sound terrible. You sound like a pig in the sky, man. So, as long as somebody has diarrhea, are well, you coming to add water in my drink? Come on. Huh? Add an respectability to your drink. <laughs> <laughs> Responsibility. Just a second. Cherry's doing madness here just now. <laughs> not too much. Yeah. I'm drinking, but Pastor was praying, so I decided to drink it out. <laughs> okay. That was terrible. All right, so Jesus said, no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. All right, so remember what God said? He said, I'll take that king, I'll take it and I'll give it to a people who will bring forth the fruits of the kingdom. What are the fruits of the kingdom? The fruits of the Holy Spirit. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Somebody. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Yeah, but read it out. Love, Love joy, peace. patience, peace, Love, kindness. Joy, peace gentleness what else long suffering mm -hmm. self control that's one mm -hmm. love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control faithfulness right so we got to bear these things in mind faithfulness to who why would why would faithfulness be a fruit who are we being faithful to we have to be faithful to somebody well, God says, 
fruits. The fruit of the spirit. The fruits. He said the fruits of the kingdom. <laughs> Matthew 21, 44. It will produce its fruit. All right. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who produce its fruit. What fruit? The kingdom of heaven's fruit. All right. So, whoever rejects him, they die. They're lost. They're gone. Yeah. And this is what Israel did. Jesus said, you didn't know the hour of revisitation. But that time is coming where Israel will die. For Jesus they will they will live and turn to him with all and he will save them remember he said in um, is it Romans 11 somewhere where he says how much more the branches that were broken you know, won't they be easily grafted in do not mock the branches don't say ha they were broken in and we were grafted in but rather that they were broken off that we might be grafted it's the fullness of the Gentiles. All right, so it represented even the 12 oxen. Just like how Benjamin was the youngest and didn't expect anything. Come on, the strongest warrior. Okay, we read in Judges 19 and 20 that ooh, he, he slayed so many men. I said he, but I'm in the tribe. Go with me. That's all for the 12 oxen. Let me see. We read 2 Kings 16, 17. That's where they were ripping everything apart. We read 1 Kings 7, 29. That's where... He was saying how to make it and what, well, yeah, well, you know, how to make it. Then, oh, we have to read 1 Kings 7, 25, though. 1 Kings 7, Alright, now check this out. How many cardinal points we have, like the main ones? East, West, North, South. Four. Check this out. First Kings 725. Ornamental buds encircled it. Ten per cubit all the way around the sea. Cast in two rows as part of the sea. Verse 25. The sea stood on twelve oxen. The sea stood on 12 oxen. What does water represent again? The A multitude of people. The Holy Spirit also. But the sea, what would the sea represent? Mm -hmm. The sea stood on 12 oxen. Three facing north, three facing west, and three facing east. The sea rested on them with all their hindquarters towards the center. So, this is 10 fingers, not 12. I need two more. <laughs> he sent them out. Remember, he scattered them. He did it for a reason. He sent them out to the four corners of the earth. How many? Four. Four into 12? Three. Okay, so three facing north, south, east, and west. We do in math no. <laughs> so why think <laughs> I use my two of my toes. <laughs> Here's what he says. So three in each direction, alright? The sea of the multitudes. The multitudes of people. Listen. They're going to come back to Jesus. They're going to remember they were blinded that we and see they will be set free they will receive their sight Whew, then you'll see war if you think it's war to do 
these normal sacrifices when they realize their goodness. Listen to what it says. So their hindquarters or their bottoms were all facing the center. So the levers really resting on what? Their backs. Lever, lever, same thing. The basin. <laughs> thick it was a hand breath thick and its rim was fashioned like the brim of a cup like a lily blossom and it could hold two thousand baths wow who made someone there was Solomon with the three oxen and the twelve oxen, Solomon temple. We went to Solomon's temple, I think. Twelve oxen, Solomon's temple. Bible verse. Yes, that's what I just read. So we hear Solomon's temple. Let's go there. He's like, First Kings 7, verse 23 to 26 now. First Kings 7, 23 to 26. We just read 25. So we read 24 to 26. To 25 now. We need to see who he, he who began a good work in you. We have completed Second Chronicles. He who started the work four two to five. We'll be faithful to complete it in you. He was really, he really made this see in detail. All right. So we're looking at 23. So we got to look at 22. First Kings seven twenty two to twenty five. And upon the pillars was lily work, so the work of the pillars were finished. He made a molten a molten sea. Who is the he? He who started the work. First Kings, second Kings, first Kings. There we go. King Hiram sent all the um, yeah, lumber. I see Hiram here in verse 40. Yeah. But who made it? It was Solomon. No, no. Yes, it was Solomon. Actually, with his hands? No. No, but Solomon constructed a temple. Right. Yeah. Uh, everything else. Right, yeah. So it was Solomon. Okay. So 1 Kings 22, verse 25. And on top of the pillars was were, was lily work. So was the work of the pillars finished. Twenty C ten cubits from one brim to the other, and it was round all about. And its height was a five cubits and a line of thirty cubits, and it did pass round about. And about there were noops noops compassing it. Ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about, and noops were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood on oxen, three looking towards the north, 
three looking towards the west, three looking towards the south, and three looking towards the east. The sea was set above them. All their hinder parts were inward. Yeah, they call them hinder. We call them bottoms. <laughs> Second Chronicles 4. Verse 1. Verse 1 to 5. He made a bronze altar, 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, 10 cubits high. He made the sea of cast metal, circular in shape, measuring 10 cubits rim to rim, 5 cubits high. It took a line of 30 cubits to measure it. Below the rim, figures of bolts encircled it, 10 to a cubit. The bolts were cast in two rows, in one piece with the sea. The sea stood on twelve bowls, three facing the north, three facing the west, and three facing the south, and three facing the east. The sea rested on the bowl towards the center. And it was a hand breath and thickness, I hear you, Papa. And he says, and it will come to pass in the last days, ten men will take hold of the hem of a... This one said it held three thousand baths. I like your, your paper weight. Thank you very much. <laughs> it come to pass in Zachariah. Ten men will take hold of the hem of a Jew and say, Let us go with you, for we heard that the Lord is with you. Zachariah 8 23. My eyes burn like pepper. Everything will be, every good thing that people say is good. Listen, verse 22 onwards. And many, many peoples, what does the sea represent? A multitude. Many peoples and strong nations will come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to plead before the lord verse 23 this is what the lord of hosts says in those days 10 men phones, and languages will tightly grasp the robe of a jewish man saying let us go with you for we have heard that god is with you zachariah 9 Verse 1. An oracle, the word of the Lord, is against the hand of Hatra. Will rest upon Damascus. For the eyes of men and all the tribes of Israel are upon the Lord. See? They gather back. And they're looking towards him. But again, an oracle. The word of the Lord is against the hand of Hadrach and will rest upon Damascus. For the eyes of men and all and of all, all the are upon the Lord. What is it saying? They are pointing the people to Yes, to God. So everybody now is looking towards who? God. Hallelujah. So it represents a unity of the tribes of Israel as they begin to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. As they begin to point the nations to Jesus the Christ saying he is our Messiah and he is Yahweh Yeshua. He is the I am who I am. Worship him. <sighs> All right. 29 and a half. Oof. I know. Around here. Wah.
I'm slurping. That's so bad. I'm sorry. Don't strike the rock twice. You, rebels. you will not see the promise. And if you strike, rebels. Think twice. <laughs> think twice. Let's shoot water from the rock. You rebels. Naughty, naughty men. All right. So now we're moving on to what was the other one in our scripture verse? Twelve thousand from each tribe. We're going into Revelation, and 12,000 from this tribe, and 12,000 from that tribe, and 12,000 from the other tribe. Those are the 144,000 evangelists Yay! who evangelize for Christ. From every tribe. Revelation 7, I think. Yes. Revelation 7, verse 8 to 10. Revelation 7, verse 8 to 10. Read with me. And it says, mm. <clears throat> All right, let's read on. Let's read all of them, actually. Revelation 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed and there. And there were sealed a hundred and forty four thousand from all the tribes of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of God were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of Aser were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of Nephilim what? Natalim and of the tribe of Manasseh Manasseh Manasses Manasseh okay this is supposed to be Manasseh Manasses or Manasseh was sealed and of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand and of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand and of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand and of the tribe of Zed the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. Verse nine. After this, I beheld and lo, one could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Remember when he was explaining. Who was seeing it, Daniel or John? The sea. The great harlot sits upon many waters. A sea of people. Where's that? That's from Revelation. So that's John. So John. All right, so it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. This could be like the sea. See a people which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands hallelujah so the 12 tribes are sealed and then we have a multitude remember the bulls they carrying also a, they they support in a, a what a sea a molten sea it says a molten sea all right let's see water in the lake Mm -hmm. so with white robes and palms in their hands and they cried in a loud voice saying what are they saying remember what we just read that powerful scripture that said they look all the tribes of israel look to the lord and all the peoples of earth look to the lord hallelujah i love it i love it zachariah 
9. <laughs> okay, excited. Yay! Zechariah 9, verse 1. That shall not depart me from this day. <laughs> All right, so here's what it says. And it says, and cried with a loud voice. Satan to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and to the Lamb. Hallelujah. And of course, I was just thinking before it. It's coming in heaven who are grateful for the mercy of God and not being cast down with Satan. They're also bowing down, crying salvation to the to the the God who sits on the throne to the Lamb. All right. So. All the angels, hallelujah, see, see, okay, around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God. Holy. All of them, everybody's big party in heaven. And then saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. So look what's happening. All who were redeemed from the tribes of Israel, they shout in glory, hallelujah. All who were redeemed from the earth by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is how the tribes of Israel were redeemed as well, shouting hallelujah. All the angels shouting hallelujah. Everybody in heaven shouting hallelujah. We should just throw up all the books and go hallelujah too. Let's just have a party. Yay! Yay! <laughs> huh? Yes, and we... we wow, we just like that for... For a thousand years. And if, and if a child dies a hundred, say he dies so soon. Mm. Dies a hundred, say he died already. Mm -hmm. He died so young. That would be like a baby age. Mm -hmm. That would be like two years old. Check this out. Or ten years old. All right. All right. Hallelujah! All that excitement. Yeah. <coughs> Boiling down now. So they shall repopulate. 12,000 from each tribe. Yep. It says 12,000 from each tribe. Let me see if I get a, a verse that actually says that. So what happened to the poor children with this? Is? You forget them. 12,000. <laughs> some, the some of them will be saved. They must confess that Jesus is Lord first. Twelve thousand of each tribe. Also in Numbers thirty-one. Remember when they were no. The Lord is about souls, and the battle is raging on the earth. But it's also in the spirit realm. It's actually, we don't wrestle against flesh, but we wrestle against spirit. So it's a spirit. And all the tribes of Israel are dispatched. All around, you see, he just showed us like three and three and three and three. It surrounds the earth. God has given his people dominion. Okay, next one. There are, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, we have to read that. We just read that. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. Leon. Oh, he had a And that was it. Leah had weak eyes. She had beautiful eyes that made him weak. Had eyes. Rachel had a beautiful form. <laughs> he wanted Rachel. <laughs> All right, so. I think we should stop here for now. We're almost finished. We'll do these are the twelve tribes of Israel. So we'll examine the twelve sons of Jacob and yeah, we'll continue, we'll finish it out, okay? It's gonna take a while. We're gonna have to read a lot, a lot, a lot. Like when each son was born. We're gonna 
very the meanings of them, the strengths of the children of Israel and their what their tribe represents. Because we know when God gives a name, He doesn't do it by guess. I'm almost finished. All right, so God bless you, beloved. I hope this was encouraging to you. I hope you learned something. If it was just one Bible verse, remember. Remember everybody's just praising the Lamb because it's Him that we all have to come to and through. And if we don't come to and through Him, then we're not going to go anywhere. Amen? We're not going to be saved. Now, remember Zechariah 9, 1, where the whole earth looks at looks to the lord and all the tribes of israel look to the lord i love it i love it i love it so whatever he taught us amen and thank him for the rest that we will receive so father we just come in your awesome and most precious name jesus christ and we thank you abba father for showing us about the 12 oxen and just the 12 tribes of your people father israel we thank you, Lord God, that um, as you open the scriptures and expound it to us, Lord God, we see that even though your people are in a blind state now, that the rest of the world might be grafted in, Father. We ask, Lord God, that we be humble to the salvation that is given unto us, Lord God, that none of us will turn from the 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 right to the left 